Oh man, good thing I brought my bag of tricks today. Looks like we're doing more graphing. Let me show you guys a couple of tricks. And I always want you guys to remember it. When we're doing a equation for a graph, two things you always want to know. How to find the slope and the y-intercept. Take a second, watch that video on finding slope. Let's just refresh your memory. From now on, we're going to think of slope as our m. Okay, so think of the letter m as your slope. It's going to come into play in just a bit. So how do we find the slope? We always count the rise over the run. Let's go ahead and pick a point from here to here. We're going to find the slope. Always like to do the rise first. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I stop there because I'm at a horizontal line. So that's six. That's my rise. And what is my run? Well, we're going to have to run to the left. So we're going to have to go one, two, three, four, five. Five times to the left. That's a negative five because when we found our slope, we were talking about anytime I move to the left or down, that's going to be a negative. So my slope is six over negative five. Okay. Now I want you guys to understand how to find the y-intercept. How can we remember the y-intercept? Well, back in my football days, I used to love to intercept passes from the quarterback. How did I do that? I would have to watch the quarterback and right where he threw the ball, try to intercept it. Think of the y-intercept as our y is trying to intercept the pass. So where does the y actually intercept? Right at the point where the line touches the y axis and that would be right there so what is our y intercept i'm going to go ahead and write it as y intercept is equal to where does our line touch the y it touches it right here which is one two three four so again how do we remember what the y intercept is think of it as the quarterback throwing a pass this is the direction of the football Oh, and there jumps in the y-axis and it takes the pass. Touchdown! Let's learn a little bit more about what the y-intercept really is. Okay, so back to our example. We had figured out that the slope was negative 6 over 5 and our y-intercept was 4. Okay, so why do I want to find those two things? When we write the equation of a line, we're always going to use this same formula, which is y equals mx plus b always going to use y equals mx plus b when we're trying to write it in slope intercept form. Why do you think it's called slope intercept form? Well, it's because it's got the slope, which is always going to be represented by m, and it also has our y intercept, which is, which is also always represented by b. Okay, so our m is always going to stand for slope, and our b always stands for the y intercept. Therefore, when I write the equation of a graph in slope-intercept form, all I do is plug in my values. So remember, I said slope stands for m. Therefore, I'm going to rewrite my equation. y is y. And instead of an m, now I actually write the slope. I take that m out, and I put where my slope is, which is negative 6 over 5. I leave my x and I plug in my y-intercept. Now this is very important. If my y-intercept is positive, I go ahead and write it as positive four. Later on down the road, you may see a negative y-intercept, so we would probably write it as minus four. In this case, this is our equation. One more time, we always plug in our slope in for m and our y-intercept in for b, and again, why is this called slope-intercept form? Because we know the slope and we know the y-intercept.